There is an old and well-known technique for adding a dreamy glow to images. I've seen this done in astrophotography, typically with nightscape photography, when you have the earth and sky in the view. You can also apply this effect for deep space images as well. Astrophotographer Carrie Ann Leckie Hepburn, I think, did this most attractively as part of her stylistic rendering of many scenes. I highly recommend you check out some of her work. Look at her portfolio. Now, more recently, Paul Hancock, otherwise known as Polyman Astro, has introduced a script which does precisely this uh, operation. It's called the Orton Glow, so it has a name. And this is the script. I'm going to talk about the script in one moment, but let me just mention that I'm going to be applying the effect to images that I have generated as part of my new course on narrowband image processing. So when you look at these images, if you like the way that they are produced, you will really like the new course called Narrowband Fast Track. So the way the, the technique or the effect works is you take an image and then you bl make a blurred copy of itself and then blend that blurred copy back in to create your final image. And with some parameterization, with you know some sliders and things, you can choose how you want to blend it back in. You can choose the, uh, the degree of the blurring and also the opacity of the final result. So that's what this script does, and you can look into grabbing it. But the reason that I wanted to make this video is I wanted to point out that that particular effect and many others is already built into another script uh, that we, uh, well, that I've been highlighting for a while now, and it is the image blend script. So you won't see Orton Glow or any labeling of any particular techniques in this script because it is a general purpose tool. They're all in here at some level. It's just knowing, you know, how to do it is the, the interesting part. And we can demonstrate that exact effect within Image Blend. So I just wanted to show you that there are many different approaches for manipulating images and uh, choosing the best method for your purposes is always going to be something that I think you'll find important and attractive. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this wizard uh, nebula image first. Given that this is an image that's going to be manipulating the glow of features, you probably don't want the stars in the image, unless you want the stars to also have that glow. Now for nightscape images, that can actually be quite good. But maybe for deep sky images, adding additional halos to stars is not necessarily desirable. So you load the two images, as I've done here, and then you'll find that there is a filter parameter, which might still yet be expanded. Uh, but at the moment, there are two basic parameters, uh, uh, filters. One is a blur filter and one's a high pass filter. And they're kind of opposite of one another. We're going to use, obviously, the blur filter here. In another video, I, I um, demonstrate how to use the high pass filter to increase the contrast of features in your image. Uh, that's like a sharpening type of um, operation. But in this case, we're going to use the blur. Now, right now, what I'm uh, showing is a blend mode of replace. So when I operate uh, and change the values here, I'm going to see those changes of this particular image because it's basically on top of our underlying base original image, if you will. So let me just show you that if we change the blur radius, we do get a blurred image. There it is. Hey. So you choose the level or degree that you would like to blur the image. What generally makes sense is you're, you're going for that extra light. So you want to blur enough that the, the structure or the detail in general is going to be smoothed out. And then uh, you choose the method by which you're going to blend that in to the original image. And what's nice about Image Blend is we get all possible blending operations. And you'll see there's a long list of them here. Uh, so uh, the typical one that is used would be screen, although you can try soft light and overlay. Those are the three that are given in uh, Polyman script, but you can play around with others that are here as well. Let's go ahead and just use screen because it really is the, the general way that this is done. And here you can see, boy, that adds a glow, right? Maybe too much. Uh, maybe that's a little bit too much. So what we can do is take our opacity down 
and choose the degree to which we want that glow to be incorporated. That's my original image, which now looks quite dark. Maybe it didn't look dark in the beginning. It's not. But if we wanted to add this kind of glowiness to it, we can by increasing our opacity here until we get it to a level that it, I guess for the, the look of it, it kind of softens the view, right? So maybe we like it here. But I'd also like to mention that if you thought that the background was getting too bright, uh, using Image Blend, we have additional reach as far as uh, manipulating the image and thresholding um, elements of it. So for example, we can raise the black point here and by doing so, we will lessen the degree that the glow effect occurs on the very faintest parts of this image because I'm basically black clipping. I'm only leaving available the blurred elements that are brighter than whatever I'm clipping. And in the same way, I can also adjust the midtones here, or I can go the other way and, uh, you know, make this blurred copy brighter, and that's going to make the glow of just the highlights stand out that much more. So let's look at the before and the after and you can see the glowiness that we're getting. So that's, that's pretty much it. That is how you use it. I just wanted to show you that it was incorporated. It's already here in Image Blend with additional capability. Now from here, why don't we go ahead and create this image, this new version of it. And if we wanted to, we can now uh, put the stars into here. I did um, make these stars available. So this is the wizard stars. So I will just use another script really quickly here, which is the screen stars script, where we will say, let's see, which stars are these? Yeah, uh, no, not the helix. We want the wizard. So wizard stars here. Starless view is now image blend. And we go OK. And there we have a beautiful glowy version, and I, I kind of like it. I wish I had thought to use that. It's kind of fun if you just use a little bit of it uh, to make it a little bit more glowy. It is kind of neat. So there is an application of that particular effect. Let's look at it one more time with another image that I generated using a special technique, a new technique that's available in uh, Narrowband Fast Track. Let's look at uh, the Helix Nebula here. In this image, I have incorporated the S2 component and had it put in in such a way that it is very strong and bright, so you can see how it is interacting with the hydrogen alpha and the O3. Uh, so there's a nice technique for doing that now. Uh, but again, this image does have this kind of high contrast, especially right around in the center. So again, if we wanted to, we could go right back to Image Blend and apply that same idea, perhaps even the same settings. All we need to do is just switch out the, uh, the object here. So we're, this is the, now it's the HSO final, sorry. This one and this one. So here we are, and uh, this time I might not want to black clip it in the same way that, or to the same degree as previously, because it does help perhaps bring up the outer lobes here. And so you make some adjustments, give it a little bit of a glow, opacity, choose how much you want the glow to be. That's too glowy, too much. Yeah, very low, small amount here. Uh, if you thought you wanted to try overlay, you could try, or um, soft light maybe, you can see that you'll get a much more contrasty result. So that would need to be managed in a very different way, perhaps with a mask, for example. But screen, again, is the very typical way of doing this. And then you go OK, and you get the result. So let's close this. Go ahead and put the stars in. This is probably Image Blend 2. And we need not those stars, but different stars. These are the Helix stars. There we go. There we have it. Maybe the sky has now become a little bit too bright, so we can take out. Actually, it's not bad to be honest, but if we wanted to, we could take out a bit of the brightness of the sky here. Not too much. 
And there we have it, a glowy version of the Helix Nebula. Now in my final version of the Helix Nebula, which is here, you can see that I, uh, I did go with a little more contrast than a glowy version would give me. And I obviously uh, did pump up the color a bit because I wanted to really distinguish uh, between all of the yellows, oranges, and so on. To summarize, Polyman script is great. One of its niceties is that the operations, the steps you do, are in order. You literally do, first you find the image, you do the blur, and so on. You choose your blending mode. Whereas in image blend, that isn't demonstrated for you. So it goes step by step here, which is always nice when you create a script just like that. However, image blend shown here is a more general purpose tool. It doesn't have the steps, although that's where I come in. I make wonderful videos that explain to people how to think and know the approach for these steps. Because you know, if you know how a particular effect works, then you'll see that those options are available in a script just like this, and you can take advantage of them. I hope that you've enjoyed this quick little uh, demonstration of some of the tools and scripts that are available in PixInsight, and now you can take advantage of them for your own images. Hi, I'm Adam Block. Thank you for joining me. I have a really big announcement. I've created a new course on my website at Adam Block Studios called Narrowband Fast Track. This is an introductory course to narrowband image processing that will allow you to consistently create beautiful narrowband images. Narrowband Fast Track is in the Horizons collection of videos of which there are many categories and one specializes in narrowband imaging. Now there's an introductory course to this area, which is narrowband fast track. Clicking here brings us to the course, which begins with a primer that introduces many of the important concepts that you'll want to know before we get into the workflow sections. It talks about filters. It talks about the need, for example, to take care of the stars independent of the nebula and many more important concepts. Then later, when we get to the workflow sections, what was nice about this course is that I was able to garner images from members themselves. So I use their data and process it to produce the images that are shown. A workflow guide is also provided in PDF form so that you can follow along step by step in everything that you need to do as far as the production of these images goes. And of course, you get to download the data and follow along precisely so that you can produce exactly the images that are shown here. The course does come along with some innovations that I demonstrate, which includes a nice trick to minimize the kind of noise that you typically get for one-shot color cameras. They tend to have a much larger modeling kind of noise. I also demonstrate a new technique which allows you to incorporate uh, S2 data in an already produced HOO image. There are many more little tips and tricks as well as major uh, discoveries that you'll have when watching this course that will help you produce beautiful narrowband images. And just remember, when you buy Narrowband Fast Track, you can use that purchase towards the purchase of Horizons, the even larger collection of videos, which includes many masterclasses on comet image processing, on mosaics, and much more. So join today and become a member of a community of the most comprehensive videos available.